Good evening people, welcome back to my channel. I am UndeadSick83, your governor of Walking Dead Reviews. And since it's Saturday, it's time to do another movie review. And I'm not as excited about it as I should be, probably. Um, but I'm still looking forward to discussing this movie with you, with you and telling you how I feel about it. So... Since it's Saturday, we are also drinking beer, so cheers. <clears throat> so, I'm going to reveal the title in a minute, but before I do that, uh, even though this is going to be a less positive movie review, I still hope that you will enjoy it and that you will stay with me and... and you know, let me dive into uh, the debate about the movie that I'm, that I'm going to talk about. So, without further ado, I'm going to reveal the title. Um, tonight, I am going to talk about and discuss Roman Polanski's Bitter Moon. Bitter Moon, there you go. A Roman Polanski film. Um, so... As I said before, um, this movie was a request. Uh, someone f that reacted on my videos uh, basically made a request, you know, can you do a, re a review about this movie? And uh, the channel's name is uh, sh uh, sh sh I, st I still don't know if I pronounce it the right way. Um, I'm sorry if, if it's wrong, but Again, it's capital capital S, small m, capital S, small h. So, uh, um, but yeah, the, uh, the channel uh, made a request, like, can you do a review on Bitter Moon? And uh, I said, like, well, well, you know, I would love to, but I don't, I don't own the movie yet, so I, I have to get it first. Um, but in my last haul, as you saw in the uh, live stream, I purchased the movie and um, I have seen it now, I've watched it, I've made, uh, I've made notes and I'm ready to dive into this, uh, into this discussion and into this review with you all. And uh, sh uh, shmsh sh again. <laughs> I'll never be able to get that right. Um, he, uh, he or she knows it. Um, if you are watching, this is my review for Bitter Moon. Okay. So let's start off with uh, the basics for this movie, of course, uh, uh, with every movie. And that is the story. So what is Bitter Moon about? Okay. So uh, the movie starts with uh, a married couple. We have uh, Nigel and Fiona Dobson, uh, played by Hugh Grant and uh, Kirsten Scott Thomas. And uh, Nigel and Fiona Dobson are a married couple and they are on a... Uh, cruise in the Mediterranean to celebrate their uh, wedding anniversary and as it turns out you know they have been married for about seven years so again uh, the seven year itch is lurking around the corner you know um, and uh, basically while they are on this cruise they are meeting uh, another married couple uh, one of them uh, one of them, Fiona, actually helps when she is in the bathroom uh, because it feels like she's, you know, passing out or maybe she's sick or something. And then later on, uh, Nigel meets up with uh, her husband, uh, who is played by Peter Coyote. And uh, he is actually a guy who is in a wheelchair. And by the way, the wife is being played by uh, Emmanuel... Seigner, I have to say that. So, so they meet this other married couple, uh, and they basically they start uh, spending time with them, uh, mostly 
Nigel, Hugh Grant's character. Um, he basically gets, you know, involved with the with the uh, the, the husband in, in the wheelchair, and basically, uh, the uh, you know Peter Coyote's character, the husband, um, is going to, is starting to tell him stories about how he and his wife met and how they got married and where you know why they are the way that they are now and it's basically being told through flashbacks um but he also starts to warn uh you grant's character nigel because his wife might not be the person that he thinks she is because as it turns out um nigel is also growing a certain attraction to this to this other woman and he starts you know to flirt a little bit with her so but then her husband is giving off all of these signals you know you know maybe you shouldn't trust her and maybe you know she is not who she appears to be and that's basically how the story uh, starts and unfolds and then of course um as you would expect uh the, the, with a lot of twists and turns, eventually we are going to find out what's what in the end, hopefully. So that's kind of like the story for um, for Bitter Moon. So how do I feel about this movie? How do I feel about this movie? <clears throat> so what are my feelings on Roman Polanski's Bitter Moon? Oh boy, um, I didn't like this film. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I never, th I, I didn't think I would say that, but I didn't like this mo I didn't like this film. I didn't like it. Um, it so, uh, if you, if you are watching, I'm sorry, but I just. No, I, I, I don't I don't know it this movie this movie did nothing for me it was kind of like I'm really disappointed in this movie I I, I have um, um this is going to be a tricky thing um yeah I just I don't know I was very I was very disappointed with uh, bitter moon. I was very disappointed with it, and um, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, but first of all, I would like to there there are there are some positives about this movie, so I would like to go through the positives first, and then go to the things that I didn't like about this movie because there were more things about it that I, that I didn't like than there were things about it that I loved. So. I'm going to go through the positive stuff first because I feel like I have to. Okay, so let's start off with the positives. What are the positives of Bitter Moon? Okay. The first thing that I that the first thing I actually loved very much about this movie was the music. I mean, Vangelis is really on point with this one. Um, you know, I, I like their music in Blade Runner as well. Uh, in Conquest of Paradise, uh, 1492, I believe it was. Uh, the Christopher Columbus movie. Um, so, you know, I love their music. Vangelis does a great job. And even in this movie, they really hit the mark. I mean... You have this, you have all of these, you know, sensual and mesmerizing uh, piano piano tunes and piano themes throughout the movie that are really, that are really working for me. They really work for me. I thought the music was really, really good. I, I thought the music was really, really good. So that's, that's, that's one positive that I have to say. Um, the other positive that I have is that uh, Peter Coyote 
is a great actor. I mean, Peter, Peter Coyote is a really good actor, and he does a very good job in this movie portraying a, you know, sexually perverted, sort of ego, egotistical guy that, you know, cares about no one but himself, basically. You know, he has this, he, he has this narcissistic, you know, attitude towards him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, his, his character was actually very interesting. His character was very interesting. So I thought, you know, Peter Coyote did a really, really good job. And uh, he really landed the role and he really, he really did a great job. So, so my second positive for me would have to be uh, Peter Coyote. Because Peter Coyote does phenomenal, uh, phenomenal in, this, in this movie. So, so that's the second positive thing. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this, uh, about this movie, um, is how beautiful the women are. Um, you know, if you are, if you are going to make an erotic thriller, I mean, that's what this, that's what this is, apparently, an erotic thriller, which I'll get back to, which I'll get back to, but, um, if you are going to make an erotic thriller, you better have some pretty damn beautiful woman in there. And uh, the, I, I do have to give it that. I mean, the women in this in this movie are very, very beautiful. Um, especially, especially Emmanuel Seidner. I mean, she is gorgeous. She is, she is so beautiful. She is like, you know... She is magical to look at. She is really, really beautiful and gorgeous. So, so that's that's another positive that I would give the movie. Uh, that you have some really beautiful woman in there in in this in this movie. So, um, but basically, basically those are all my positives for this movie. <laughs> The, those are all the positives I I have. So I know there there aren't much, but I I just I don't know. Like I was, like I said, I I was very disappointed with this film. So those were the positives. Now I'm going now I'm going to move on to the negatives of this movie, and um, so be prepared. Because Bitter Moon is a movie that I have a lot of issues with. And I'm going to go over those issues right now. And the first thing that I want to, uh, the first thing I want to talk about really is that for, you know, like I said, if you are going to make an erotic thriller, you better make an erotic thriller and the thing with Bitter Moon is, with this movie, right here, Bitter Moon, the thing with this movie, with this movie, is that for, for here's, here's the thing, for an erotic thriller, which is, apparently that's what this is, apparently this is an erotic thriller, but um, for an erotic thriller, um, the amount of sex in the film is just very, very limited. I mean, I'm not even kidding. There, there aren't, there aren't, there aren't really a lot of sex scenes in this movie, and um, and I think that's a real problem. I mean, I mean, you you don't even have you don't even have a love scene between. Hugh Grant and Kirsten Scott Thomas, you know, the main characters, Nigel and Fiona, you don't, e you don't even have a love scene between those two, and they are supposed to be married for seven years. I mean, I mean, it's just, I just thought it was very problematic, and again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to come off as some sort of 
you know, sexist or something, but I mean, it, it, when I watch an erotic thriller, I want to see some, I want to see some great steamy sex scenes. You know, that's kind of like, that's kind of like par for the course. So, you know, and, and the truth of the matter is, is that there aren't really a lot of erotic scenes in Bitter Moon, you know, and, and, and the sex scenes that are in the movie, they aren't even that exciting to watch. The, the sex scenes that are in the movie are not really that exciting to, to see. So, 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 you know, if, if you were, if you were going to do, the, if you were going to do this, then why would you call this an erotic thriller? I don't think it's an erotic thriller, to be honest, but that's just me. So, yeah, so for an, ero for an erotic thriller, I was just really missing, you know, the sex scenes in this, in this movie. But that's just me. Again, I don't want to sound off like, a, like, a, like some sort of sexist, so... <clears throat> but yeah, that's one problem I have with the movie. Um, the second problem I have with this movie is that, you know, maybe, <clears throat> here's the thing, maybe it's because he has been in, in too many comedy films. Maybe it's because he has been in too, you know, in too many comedies. But you, Grant, really feels out of place in this film. You, Grant, is is really he really does not belong in this movie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it just it just doesn't work on any level. It just doesn't work on any level. I don't buy into his serious character. I I don't. I just don't buy into it. I, uh, you know, every time, every time I looked at you, Grant, I was like, you know, why aren't you in Notting Hill? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know all the titles that he was in, but, you know, why aren't you in your comedy movies? You know, it's just, it just didn't, it just didn't work for me on any level, and. I just feel like Hugh Grant was a wrong casting choice. I feel like he is really out of place in this movie. Um, you know, I think it would have been better if they had given this role to someone else. Because I really think Hugh Grant shouldn't have been in this movie. And, and that's problematic. It's problematic because, you know, it's, it's, it's problematic because at the end of the movie, I was like, uh, "Okay, it it was in it was interesting, but I don't really care about his character because, you know, you Grant just doesn't really land that role that you know that well. He's not he's not the he's not the right fit for a movie like this, and he he doesn't have it in him." to bring a character like this to life. I'm I'm sorry I don't want to offend any U Grant fans or people who love U Grant. I'm I'm sorry. I I don't want to I don't want to upset anybody, but this is just this this is the way I feel. This is the way I feel and it's it really the movie really suffers from that. So yeah, so it is what it is. That's my second negative for this uh, for this movie. <clears throat> okay, so the th uh, the third thing that I would say about this movie is that I don't really get the narrative of this movie. I don't really get it. I don't really get the the narrative of this movie i mean you know what is you know what is the message of this film exactly exactly what is the message of this film 
can anybody can anybody tell me that can anybody explain that to me because I could not read that I just didn't see what this movie was about and and I think that's a real problem because I look at the at, at the end of the day whatever movie I watch I want it to give me something right every time I watch a movie I want to walk away with something you know I I want to feel like I have earned something or learned something from it you know and you know it's just you know for you know for for example for, for example let's go back let's go back a bit for example you know uh, David Cro David Cronenberg's crash you know I I took a I took a lot away from that. I took a lot of uh, I took a lot away from that film in terms of narrative, in terms of you know thematics and stuff like that. David Cronenberg's Crash is a movie that gave me a lot of things, but with this movie, I just I just I just don't see the message. I mean, what is the what is the theme of this movie? I just don't, I just don't see it. And you know, and some people are, and some people are going to say, like, you know, well, you know, it's 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 all about sexual obsession. And yes, I get it. To to a certain extent, this movie is about sex sexual obsession. Absol absolutely, I get that. I get that. The the the. The problem of it is, is that that particular trope doesn't really transfer that well into this movie. You know, if you are, if you are going to make a movie based on that, you know, topic, right? Sexual obsession. Like, it doesn't really transfer that well into the narrative. And that's, I think that's an issue. You know, especially, you know, especially with again with the main characters you know with Fiona and Nigel like exa exactly what is what I just don't I just don't get it exactly what is their sexual obsession you know Nigel and Fiona what is their sexual obsession I just don't see it and like I said before they don't even have a they don't even have a love scene at the start of the movie or something. So, so there is no, you know, so there is no erotic context that basically connects them to that narrative. So, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I just don't get what this movie is about. I just don't get what this movie is about. And by the way, Speaking about sexual obsession, there is, I mean, the the sexual obsession in this movie is, is not just sexual obsession, it's sexual perversion, alright? It's absolutely sexual perversion. I mean, there were, there were certain erotic scenes in this movie that I thought that they actually disgusted me i mean it, i i was like i was like really is this the kind of stuff you have to do to get your rocks off and i just don't i just didn't like it so uh, again in terms of the sexual perversion obsession i feel like this movie took it too far as well i i just i didn't like that so yeah, but that's that's another problem for me. Like, what what is this what is this movie actually about? I I don't know. I don't know. I I don't I don't know. Okay. So my my last negative. This is the last negative I have. Um. The last negative for me is some is a really big problem for me. The last issue might be the biggest problem I have with this movie. Okay? 
Are you ready? Brace yourselves, okay? Brace yourselves. The last problem I have with this movie is the character of Mimi being played by Emmanuel uh, Seidner, who, who, like I said, is a beautiful woman. She is absolutely gorgeous. But the problem for me isn't the fact that she is beautiful. The problem for me with her character is that Mimi is such an insulting, ridiculous, and pathetic character. I mean, I was like, are you kidding me with this? Are you kidding me? It, you, you know, you have... This is, go this is going to be your main female character? Really? This is going to be your, your main female character. It, it was sad. Really, it was sad. It was sad to watch such a character, you know, to see a character that has so much potential, you know, becoming this, you know, obsessive and needy and, you know, and, and just pathetic you know, kind of personality. I mean, it's 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 mind blowing how downgrading it is. I just I I hated that so much. I hated it. I absolutely hated it because because I I want strong female characters. I want strong female characters and. You know, and the th here's the thing, you know, they, uh, the, the, uh, luckily, you know, we are getting, we are getting more and more strong female characters, right? And, and uh, as well as, you know, black ma uh, lead characters, but, you know, also sh female characters. Over the last couple of, you know, years, there have been a lot of strong female characters, I mean, like from Game of Thrones, you know, you have Daenerys and, and Arya and, and, and Cersei and, and, you know, all of those people um, with, you know, with, with Star Wars. I mean, you have Rey, for God's sake. Rey is, is a fantastic female character who is strong and smart and capable and, you know, and even going back to... Uh, to earlier movies in like the 80s and stuff you know Sarah Connor Ellen Ripley um, you know uh, I, don't, I don't know a uh, Dana Scully you know there have been so many great you know strong female characters who are like I said smart and capable and you know and and you know uh, you know just just being being able to adapt and stuff like that, there have been some really great, strong female characters over the last couple of decades. And it just really saddens me to see a main character, because she is a main character. Mimi is a main character. And it really saddens me to see such a character being downgraded in such a way that Again, he becomes this needy, pathetic personality, and I think it's just really insulting. I think it's just really insulting to to women. It's really insulting to women, and and you know you you can again you can have strong female characters in um, erotic thrillers. You know, uh, the, maybe the biggest one. Sharon Stone in Basic in in Instinct. Instinct. Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct. I mean, that is your core erotic thriller main female character. And Sharon Stone is fantastic in that movie. I mean, that's, that's a strong, strong female character right there. I mean, see, I mean... She is the bad guy, she is the villain, 
but still she is a strong female character and I just it really upsets me to see something like this in in you know in just any movie but this movie as well and I think it's just really really insulting I think it's really insulting and um, and I think it it just adds to you know it just adds wounds to injury you know I, I is that a right analogy I don't know it, it really hurts the movie it really hurts the movie and yeah I I don't know I don't know I just I didn't I didn't I, I, I don't know I didn't I didn't I didn't care about it I just didn't care about it uh, Samantha Samantha Carter that's what I was trying to say uh, Samantha Carter from uh, Stargate SG-1 you know I mean I mean hell you know Stargate has had great female characters uh, Samantha Carter uh, Taylor and Morgan, uh, Jennifer Keller, uh, Janet Fraser. Th there have been great female characters in in Stargate as well, and I don't know. This this was just very disappointing. So so yeah, I think I I think I talked about pretty much everything I wanted to talk about here. So so in closing, in closing. <clears throat> okay, so in closing, um, yeah, like I said, I, I didn't like this movie. I thought it was very disappointing. Um, it has some good things in it, but overall, I think it's just, I think it's just a mediocre, uh, dr uh, here, here's what I would call it. I think it's a mediocre drama film. Uh, that pretends to be an erotic thriller. I, uh, that's the best way I would describe it. That's how I would, you know, announce it. So, and, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, this was just very disappointing. And I wanted to like it. I really wanted to like it. Because I like, you know, I like Roman Polanski. I I like Roman Polanski, you know. I've, I've liked a lot of his movies you know i've liked repulsion i loved rosemary's baby so so i really like roman polanski but i just this movie this movie just didn't do anything for me it 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 tries to be something it isn't um and it's just on on certain levels it's just kind of insulting so yeah i i don't know I don't know. I, I, it just wasn't for me. I guess it just wasn't for me, and um, I kind of feel bad because, like I said, I really wanted to like this movie, uh, especially, uh, especially for you, uh, Shumsh. Again, <laughs> I hope I pronounce it right. I really do, but um, especially for you, uh, Shumsh. I, I really wanted to like this film, but I just. It didn't give me anything, and I just thought it was very weak on several fronts. So, you know, what can you do? You know, I just, I'm sorry I have to say this, but I also have to be honest. So, otherwise I wouldn't be a very good critic. So, so yeah, overall, very disappointed with A Bitter Moon. So, so in terms of my rating for Bitter Moon... What would I rate Bitter Moon? That's a tough one. Um, let me think. What would I rate this movie? Um, you know what? Um, I'm going to give Roman Polanski's Bitter Moon... I'm going to give this movie a 6 out of 10. That's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's, that's the best way, that's the best I can do for this, for this movie. That's the best I can do. Uh, it's a 6 out of 10. 
it has some good things in it and I, you know, the concept is good. I really, I, I like the concept, you know, making a movie about sexual obsession and all of that stuff, but, you know, but again, why wouldn't you make a movie like Crash, for example? It's, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's, so, overall, it has some good things going for it, and, um, and I like the concept, I just, I just think the execution is very, is very weak, and some things in the movie are actually quite insulting, so, so yeah, that's that's my rating for this movie, guys. Uh, six out of ten. That's the best I can do. Um, but let me know in the comment section down below what did you think? Uh, did did you love this movie, or did you hate it as much as uh, as much as I did? If you did love the movie, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. You know, maybe maybe I'm completely wrong about this. You know, I could be completely wrong about this. It, it's all it's all subjective. So I could be completely wrong about this. So so if you love this movie, tell me in the comment section why did you love this movie? You know, why did you love this movie? L just let me know. I would like to know your you know your thoughts and opinions on this. Um, again, do you uh, if you hate it? Do you agree with my points? If you love it, you know, do you disagree? Again, if you disagree with me, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. Um, do you have any other movies that you want to recommend to me for me to uh, talk about and review on this channel? Anything in the comment section down below, let me know. I want to know your thoughts, opinions, uh, theories, ideas, as always. So anyway, um, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video as soon as possible, of course. Stay safe and healthy as always. Have a good weekend and I see you guys. Bye.